This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. I have on a shelf of my library in my den one half of a beautiful geode, what the Indians called a thunder egg. On the outside, it is a plain, drab, nondescript gray in color, rough and splotched with the mottled grime of geologic time. Externally, it would appear to be but a plain stone, twice the size of a softball. If you saw it in the brook bed of a sparkling mountain stream, you would hardly take notice of it, just one among thousands of rocks in the swirling waters. But if you dared to break it open, what an extraordinary beauty you would behold, for glimmering within it like crown jewels crusted on a luminescent diadem, clustered in gem-like flames of fire with purple glinting embers of crystal and burning beauty, there lie sparkling amethysts, violet quartz crystals glinting and glimmering inside the hollow center of the stone. From the outside, you would hardly suspect that such an inauspicious exterior could conceal such a splendid, sparkling interior. Yet such is the very nature of a geode. Through the ages of archaeological time, it conceals an inner beauty not apparent to the casual observer. And so precisely it is with you. Regardless of how plain you may appear to be superficially, there lies within you yet an incredible beauty which transcends your physical nature, an imprisoned splendor, independent of your background, uprearing, genetics, ethnic heritage, education, culture, and breeding. For within you there glows the living spirit of the living God. There is a fragment of infinity indwelling your mortal mind. The kingdom of God is within you. For beneath your physical exterior lies your spiritual interior, and you are indwelt by a spiritual beauty exceeding anything which you might ever have imagined. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God. That is the most important thing which you can know about yourself. You are not merely a fallen angel nor a risen ape. You are kin to the Creator. You are related to the very source and center of all things and beings, the Most High, Eternal, and Infinite God who loves you with a love which will not let you go. You are a priceless personality, a brim with meanings and with values, regardless of your apparently commonplace existence. I have a collection of early broadcasting equipment. Tarnished telegraph keys, corroded coils, faded lettering on burnished Bakelite, discolored silk-covered wiring, black earphones with tattered plugs. It looks like junk, but it isn't. Some of it is so valuable that equivalent specimens lie on display under 24-hour security guard in the famous Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. You simply cannot know the true value of something just by its commonplace exterior appearance. And so it is precisely with you yourself. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God, the creator of all. You are boundlessly beloved, regardless of how ordinary you may at times feel. God loves you. God has a wondrous will for the living of your life. And if you will seek it, you can and will find it. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. Your deepest need in your life is spiritual. For to love is the essence of life. Without love, life would be devoid of the joy and jubilation for which human life was created. The very author of all existence, the composer of the constellations, the poet who wrote the song of the stars, the one whom for centuries men and women have known by the name God, this great infinite father of all that is, is a God whose very origin and nature is love. And God loves you. Dare to believe that this moment and all things will begin to become transformed for you because you yourself will begin to be transformed by the growing, glowing awareness of God's spiritual purpose and mission for your life. Human life consists of countless quests for security, for money, for power, prestige, and fame. But at once the highest and the deepest of human quests is spiritual, for truth, for beauty, for goodness, and for love. And without these greater things of life, the lesser hold no authentic satisfaction, for you were made by God and for God and nothing but God can ever satisfy that thirsting of spirit which burns like salt in your soul. You may think you want and need a thousand things to make you happy. 
in the living of your life. But in truth, there is but one single necessity in the achievement of satisfaction in the living of your life, and that is the inner spiritual joy of love. The two great commandments of the Judeo-Christian teachings are simply the love of God and the love of others. And without love, there can be no happiness. Love and happiness are as indissolubly linked as the stars and the sky, mountains and valleys, and the heat and the warmth of a burning fireplace. To be happy, you must have love. And if you have love, you will be happy. It is an inexorable equation of human life. You can no more have love without happiness than you can have trees without roots. Love has happiness as a byproduct, as a consequence. To try to be happy without love is like trying to be awake when you're asleep. It is a contradiction, a mutually exclusive impossibility. Love is the ultimate source of happiness. For genuine joy is spiritual in origin and nature. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and without a vital daily companionship with God, you cannot and will not find the peace, the power, purpose, and joy for which you were created. You will not be able to live in the fullness and gladness and joy for which you were born. God loves you. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and when by faith you begin to live like kin to the Creator as you really are, life will begin at last to feel complete, unified, empowered, and right. And you can begin to find that in your life, in your experience, beginning right here and now, if you will. The deepest need in the human psyche is the need for spiritual purpose, inner meaning, divine direction. Until you have found your reason for living, you aren't really alive. God created you to live your life vitally and zestfully, not as a drab drama without plot, plan, or purpose. For there is a higher meaning to it all, whether or not you've ever dared to seek for it. God loves you. God has a challenging will for the living of your life. And nothing less than that will ever satisfy your soul. You are an infinitely valuable child of God. There's a reason for your existence a great master plan for this world and all that transpires here. God knows you not only by name, rank, and serial number, but by your heart and soul and mind and your motives, your intentions as well, for you are a boundlessly beloved child of God, a recipient of the abundant affection, the lavish love of the living God who created all this far-flung universe to be one vital, vibrant family of love, the worldwide family of God. There's a mighty plan, a thrilling purpose for your existence. You're not a mere accident. You were born for a plan. You're here for a purpose. God loves you. You're not a forsaken puppy in a cruel neighborhood, the runt of the litter in an unknown kennel, howling at a hostile moon in a dark, forbidding sky. You are a son or daughter of the living God, a child of the divine, indwelt by an everlasting spark of spirit. Have faith, have hope, have love. Remember always to look for the humor and the serious, the joy and the sad, the strength and the weak, and the good and the bad. And stop worrying about your life so much. There was a certain old cleaning woman who one day said to her employer, I notice that when you sit, you sit tight. The woman nodded. The maid said, well, you must be all tense on your inside. But she said, now look at me. When I work, I work hard. But when I sit, I sit loose. That is the secret. When you work, work hard. But when you sit, sit loose. Relax. Jesus said, be not anxious. Fear not. My peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go that I may prepare a place for you. You are a member in a great, loving, friendly family, which extends to the very boundaries and beyond of this universe of universes. And God loves you, has given a spark of spirit to indwell you. God is nearer than heartbeat and breathing and the pulse at your wrist. It's true, scientific investigations have revealed that when the Dow Jones averages on the stock market skid down, the number of businessmen complaining of upset stomachs to their doctors went up. Worry brought on an overacidity of the stomach, which in turn upset the digestive tract. Jesus said, be not anxious, fear not. In faith in God, knowing that your eternal future is secure, you can face life fearless of life and fearless of death. 
for the Most High's rule in the kingdoms of men, and the will of God will ultimately dominate history and all things, including your life, if you will give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. Back in the early days of the United States, Benjamin Franklin once said to George Washington, I have lived, sir, for a long, long time, and the longer that I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? God cares about you, every detail and aspect of your life. Jesus said the very hairs of your head are numbered. God knows you more intimately than you know yourself, and God loves you, and God has a wonderful life for you if in faith you will begin to live it by seeking the will of God, by praying, it is my will, let yours be done. It's transformative of your life, physically, mentally, and spiritually. According to the Swiss physician Dr. Paul Tournier, author of The Healing of Persons, doctors must ease human suffering, he says, through medical science while trying to make their patients see that their true hope, this is a quote there, true hope is in God. I quote Dr. Tournier, Every healing is given as a grace of God, whether it is effected through a scalpel or medicine or prayers, end of quote. Always remember that great scripture, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in times of trouble. An old farmer there was who plowed around a rock in one of his fields for many, many years. He'd actually grown morbid over it. He'd broken a cultivator on that rock and two plows besides, and he lost lots of valuable land around the rock in its vicinity. But one day he made up his mind he was going to dig that out and have done with it. When he put his crowbar under that rock, he found that it was less than one foot thick, that he could loosen it with a trifling effort, carry it away in his wagon. He smiled to think then how all through the years that rock had troubled him. One elderly woman said, I have had so many trials in my life, especially the ones that never came. Have faith in God, wrote Thomas Carlyle, the older I grow and I now stand on the brink of eternity. The more comes back to me that sentence in the catechism I learned when a child, and the fuller and deeper its meaning becomes. What is the chief end of man? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Learn to enjoy God. Enjoy love. Enjoy faith and hope and goodness. And you will enjoy life, both here and forever after. It can begin for you by living faith this very moment. The choice is before you now. Well, if you're intrigued by these topics, then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all these things on developing and cultivating your inner life, your spiritual life. That mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vernon Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.